gospel this morning comes to us from the 23rd chapter of Matthew, verses 1 through 12. You can find it on page 25 in your pew Bibles. Then Jesus said to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and the Pharisees sit on Moses' seat. Therefore, do whatever they teach you and follow it. But do not do as they do, for they do not practice what they teach. They tie up heavy burdens, hard to be, hard to bear, and lay them on the shoulders of others. But they themselves are unwilling to lift a finger to move them. They do all their deeds to be seen by others, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long. They love to have the place of honor at banquets and the best seats in the synagogues, and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have people call them rabbi. But you are not to be called rabbi, for you have one teacher, and you are all students. And call no one your father on earth, for you have one father, the one in heaven. Nor are you to be called instructors, for you have one instructor, the Messiah. The greatest among you will be your servant. All who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all who humble themselves will be exalted. Here ends the reading. We are at the tail end of this word that I just learned. I like that, learning new things, finding out new things. I don't know if you know it. I had never heard of it before. It's not often that you run across a word that has two U's right next to each other in them. Triduum. Triduum. T-R-I-D-U-U-M. It's related to the word triptych. If you've ever seen a triptych painting or something like that, it's in threes. It's a good word. It's also related to trinity. You may have heard that before. Or trio, right? A three-piece band. But I had never heard triduum. And this specifically, while trio refers to a musical group and trinity refers to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit, depending on how you learned that, and triptych usually refers to artwork, triduum refers to a group of three consecutive days. It refers to a time period. I had no idea. How did I make it this far in life and not know that? No one ever told me. So that's why I wanted to pass that along to you. I didn't want you to suffer under the same lack of knowledge that I had. <laughs> and it turns out that we in Christianity actually have two periods of Triduum. Did you know that it happens twice a year? So we didn't know this, right? And it's happening twice a year, every year, for our entire lives. Who knew? The first one takes place during Holy Week. It is the period from Good Friday to Easter morning. Those three days are linked in Christendom as a time period of waiting and preparation, and where three things happen each day that are very distinct. Good Friday, Jesus dies. Saturday, there is waiting and preparation. Easter morning, there is resurrection. But as I said, we are completing the third of the three of the second time period. We have All Hallows, which was Friday. We call that Halloween, right? And then we have All Saints, which was actually yesterday. That is the day immediately after All Hallows. And then today, technically, is All Souls Day. All Souls Day. So there you go. You have been dealing with a triduum and been completely unaware of it. And so I thought this was really interesting because, as I said, I had never heard it. Of course we celebrate All Saints Day. This is a time period where, in this church and in many churches, where we come to the front and where we make a special recognition of those who were saints in our lives, those who taught us something, those who led us into the faith, those who have left an example for us as Christians to follow. And Christianity has kind of a dubious relationship with All Hallows, with Halloween. 
there are those of us who got dressed up. I myself did. My son was a pirate this year, and we went as his crew. And if you've priced out Halloween costumes, they're kind of expensive. We decided that for a six-month-old, that was ridiculous. But every pirate needs a parrot. <laughs> every pirate needs a parrot. So Amelia went as a parrot. It's pretty awesome. But Christianity is not super comfortable with this date, although it is part of the triduum. And then, of course, there is all souls, which is a little different than all saints. Now, if you come from a different religious background, if you come uh, started your journey as a Roman Catholic, some of this may be a little more familiar to you than those of us who were wearing diapers when we came into the Methodist Church. I include myself in that. But it's really fascinating to me because what it does is it takes this entire experience, takes this entire moment in our worship service, this entire experience that we have where we get up out of our seats, where we come forward, and where we recognize that we were not the first people to sit in these seats. We were not the first people to pray to Jesus or pray to God or to do any of that stuff, but someone did it before we did, and we'd like to thank them. It takes that experience... And at least for me, it richens it. This confusing passage that we've just heard from Jesus. Remember, he has just been talking to the Sadducees. It comes just on the heels of the Sadducees deciding that they don't want to ask him any more questions about anything ever. Thank you very much. This is Jesus' opportunity to look at the people who have gathered around to hear this exchange. It's his opportunity to say... And here's what you do with it. Be careful who you listen to. Be careful that the people that are teaching you how to be a good Christian are not just telling you stuff and then going out and doing something else. This is Jesus' way of saying, do as I say, not as I do. You've got to be careful of those people. Nothing new under the sun, folks. Sometimes you've got to read between the lines, but it's there. Jesus is letting the people know that these teachers that they have been following will be perfectly happy to tell them how to do something, will be perfectly happy to give them information and send them out to stumble and fall because the burden is too heavy, because the learning is not correct, because there's no grace in it. It's just rules. And so today, on this third day of the Triduum. I'm going to use it for everything it's worth. I'm going to play it in Scrabble sometime. I'm telling you. Two U's next to one another? On this day, we have the opportunity to acknowledge that we all fall somewhere along that spectrum of people who have been involved in things like that. All hollows. That's our day to recognize that we all make mistakes. We all goof. We all are wrong sometimes. We put on masks, we get dressed up in costumes, we have some fun and acknowledge the fact that we are human beings, we are frivolous, we are silly, and we don't get it right all the time. All saints, it's our day to recognize, as I've already said, and as you know, the people who have gone before us in the faith. One of those things that I often talk about with Catholic sisters and brothers is the fact that we don't have an organized canon of saints because we recognize that all who have gone before us in one way or another in the faith are saints for one reason or another. The club is a lot more open. And then all souls. We live life surrounded by people that do not fall neatly into one category or the other, yes? Those people who are not complete goof-ups, but those people who are not completely saints either. Like I'd like to think, me? Or you? We're working on it, but we're not there yet. And so when we recognize this three series of days, this time to focus our attention on each single one, we begin to realize that we are both teachers and learners. 
We are both instructors and students. We are both fathers or mothers and children. There is not one single place that we all fit perfectly all of the time. It was never designed to be. Life is not a certainty. Life is a series of events. It's the journey, right? Not the destination. And so today, as you come up to light this candle, keep that in mind, that we are all somewhere along the continuum. We all have a little bit of Halloween night in us, a little bit of trouble, a little bit of trick-or-treat. And we all, if we are really lucky, have been touched by a saint somewhere along our journey who picked us up or conversely told us that we needed to get down on our knees. And every day, friends, when we get out of bed, we get the opportunity to do it again. So we are represented in this too. Those of us who are still, as we would say on Boom, in process. Not there yet, but we're working on it. And so I find that this whole idea of triduum is really democratizing. Lowercase d. I don't want to be confusing. Election day is on Tuesday. Democratizing. It kind of opens this to all of us. Because there are days when I don't feel like a saint. And I don't feel like I am allowed to go up there to light a candle for anybody. There are days where I'd really like to ring the doorbell and say, trick or treat, give me something good to eat. But most days I'm just Gene, doing the best I can, just like you. And that's why we have all souls. Amen?